let's take a little time here to get introduced to for loops in MATLAB. I'm going to create a script just to keep the commands all in one place and make them easy to edit. And, that, and then this gives us an opportunity to look at the basic concept of a for loop. I'm saying for k equals one to three, display the string hello, and then we're all done with the loop. So the keyword end needs to appear at the bottom. We say the loop body is the display hello, and k is the index variable. Run the script, presently called unt untitled, and we see hello printed out three times. Now let's get this loop index involved as part of the display statement. I'm going to take that existing string and then concatenate the number to string version of k. Run the script, and now we see each value of that loop index k being included in that display statement. Loops can appear inside other loops. This is called a nested loop. Let me create a two-dimensional array of values store those in array A. Then I'm going to say for R, which stands for row, for rows one to three, and then for columns one to four, I'm going to display the element of A at row R and column C. That's my loop body. That's the end for the inner for loop and then the end for the outer for loop. Let's try running that and see what happens. Well, as we might just expect, it prints out all 12 values of the array A. But to make clear where the inner loop is happening, let's put in an extra display statement there. And you see the dashes are being inserted every four values. Let me show you another technique. This is called array concatenation have a single loop here. And this loop body says A is replaced by the previous value of A joined with or concatenated with K squared, where K is the loop index. I'm going to initialize A to the empty array. Do that with the empty square brackets. I'll use the pause command so that way we can see what's happening on each step of the array. Go ahead and run. I uh, don't see much happening. Actually, having the semicolon is not a good idea for this demonstration. Let me take that out and try it again. All right, there's my first appearance of A, just a single one. I hit, hit return to advance beyond the pause statement. We see how it's building up as 1, 4, 9, 16, and 25. Now I'd like to point out that the MATLAB editor can give you a lot of help pointing out areas that improvements can be made. And in particular, it suggests that pre-allocating the variable A would improve the speed of the loop. And this becomes especially important when you're working with huge arrays. And this is how to implement MATLAB's suggestion. I'm going to pre-allocate memory for the array using the zeros function. And then for the loop body, simply say each element of k gets the value k squared. It's that simple and straightforward. Now when you run the script, you see that the array a started as mostly zeros, and then on each pass it just fills in replacing each zero with the desired value. All right, I'm almost done, but before we leave this topic, I'd like to return to that idea of initializing any variable in the loop body that makes use of previous values. In this example, I have two arrays filled with 100 values each. Here I'm initializing the first element of y to the first element of x. Now the loop index starts at 2 and runs out to n. Now at each step we see y is always calculated as the previously calculated value of y plus the current value of x. And that's why I have this line here. I can say that the very first value of y is specifically set to the first element of x. And that, that initializes or primes the pump, so to speak, for that first value of y that was needed.